So hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to quickly just walk through how to install, update, and use SocialStream as quickly as possible. Uh, so let's jump right in. We need to go to socialstream.ninja to get the extension. Uh, there's a link right at the top for downloading the extension. And we want to download the zip file. This contains all the code for the extension. Now this will work with any Chromium-based browser, Edge, Brave, Google Chrome. Um, the installation guide might be slightly different depending on which browser, but we're focused in this case on uh, Chrome. So when we download it, we get a zip file and we can extract it. Uh, we do need to extract the zip and load the zip directly into the browser to load the, load the extension because it's not available in the Chrome Web Store. So we ex uh, extracted the folder. Uh, we don't need the zip file anymore, but I'll leave it there for now. And now we need to go to our extension manager in Chrome. So manage extension, and we come here. Now by default, uh, the developer mode will probably be off. We need to enable that in our browser. And this makes available the ability to load the extension manually as source code. So we're going to click load the extension. We're going to go into our folder until we get to the main root of the extension. And then we're going to say select folder. That will now install the extension. It's going to say error, but these aren't errors. These are just warnings. Uh, we can just ignore them. Uh, down the road, I'll probably have to release Social Stream as a downloadable standalone app instead of a Chrome extension. But for now, that's not necessary. Uh, so Social Stream is now installed. To make it accessible, we need to click on this little puzzle icon and we need to um, just make sure that Social Stream is pinned so it's visible. And then we click on it and we can enable it. Uh, by default, it will probably be off, but we can turn it on and now it's active and available. Okay. Uh, so now that we're all set up and ready to go, um, I'll show you how we can use it. Let's go to, let's say my Twitch page. Um, we're going to go to the chat and here's the chat. Now we want to capture this. If we go back to social streams, uh, get repo, we see all the sites that are supported. Twitch, YouTube, da, 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 da. Next to each one, there's a hint on how to make use of it. So for Twitch, we need to pop out the chat. This way you can visit other Twitch sites. You're not going to automatically capture uh, the chat from other Twitch channels. It will only capture chat from the sites you pop the chat out for. Uh, so in this case, we're going to go down here and we are going to say pop out chat. So now that I popped out chat, I actually don't even need um, my Twitch channel open, but we'll ignore that for now. Um, if I type a message, nothing happens. We need to then do the next step. We need to open up our dashboard. This is the main um, page for social, for social stream. This is where all the messages come. It's where they all consolidate. So I can then say hello and the message will automatically appear in our dash. Uh, this is a test. I can then do emojis. It supports BTTV, so better Twitch uh, emojis. It also supports 7TV uh, and, and Frankie. Uh, essentially, it supports some of the popular Twitch uh, extensions for custom emojis as well. Okay, so we have everything working. Now, this is your dashboard. You can manage um, things from here. Um, we can also feature chat. So we open up this index page, feature chat, and then we can click on messages um, and they will appear here. Okay. So this can only show one message at a time while the dashboard can support multiple at a time. Now, uh, people might want to have multiple
messages showing in OBS. Um, if you're using OBS, like I'm, like I am here. Uh, bear with me here. Um, I'm going to open up a browser source. I'm going to take the doc link. I'm going to put it in. Um, let's make this 600, uh, 1080, 600. You need to decide what sort of width and height you want to set. But now when I um, select a message, you will see it appear as, oh, sorry. Uh, I needed to, I got that wrong. When I type in a message here, you will see it um, appear in the top left of this video. I don't see it um, on my screen, but I do see it appear in the OBS. Um, all right, so it now appears in the top left. If I want to add an overlay, right, I can do the same sort of thing. I can, let's just replace this. Um, now I can go to my dashboard here and I can select a message and it will, it will appear in the bottom left of the screen for you. Um, I only see that within OBS, but you're seeing it in the bottom left of the screen. Uh, and I can then go through different messages. There's options to automate it. So when a new message comes in, it will automatically appear. Uh, new auto message. And that should automatically appear within OBS. Uh, you'll notice that the menu bar doesn't appear when we add it to OBS. Uh, we automatically make the background transparent and we automatically hide the menu bar when we add this dashboard to OBS. Um, we can also clear the messages with that. Uh, if you want to configure things, there's more options than I can count. So you can uh, go through and play with these things all you want. Um, fade in messages. Some of the things you might want to do is enable compact mode, no text outline. Uh, you get rid of all these background shading options, maybe make the emojis larger. Uh, no, uh, you might want to hide the menu bar depending on how you want to use it. Uh, force background. Let's say you're using vMix and not OBS. You might want to hide the menu and force the background. Um, you have all these other options. And now you can use this doc link that's now been customized within. Um, now it's, it's a little bit different. So you'll see that it's visually different than the other link we have open. So in this page, it's, we have a menu, but this page with all these added parameters at the top has a different effect. The background is now transparent, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and you can just reuse this link and it will preserve most of the settings. Some of the settings um, are tied to the extension. Some of them are tied to the URL. But you can also customize the featured chat page as well. So automatically hide the feature chat after 20 seconds. Um, choose what you want to show around the edges. Um, choose custom fonts, etc. There's other uh, there's other custom overlays. There's an emote wall that shows emojis bouncing around. There's a height meter. There's this wait list um, that's being worked on more, but essentially it lets your your chat users use commands to join a an on-screen waitlist or queue or some sort of um, some sort of maybe a, a lottery, for example. Um, and then you have your general tools. So some sites like Discord, WhatsApp, Telegram, and so these sites here you have to opt into to make use of. It will not capture those sources by default for security and privacy reasons. If so, if you want to capture WhatsApp chat, you need to enable that, and then it will capture your WhatsApp chat. Um, yeah, 
so uh, that's kind of the, the basics of social stream it's highly customizable um, when you want to update it and it will not automatically update you have two options let me actually show you that before i go um, when you click on the extension at the bottom you can export to disk your settings right and now you can uninstall the extension download the new version reinstall it and then say import your settings and now your settings are back to the way they were before you uninstalled if you uninstall the extension um all right if you uninstall it remove it you will lose all your settings unless you back them up first now the other way of updating again um we can go to the socialstream.ninja page go to the installation uh, to the zip file we can download the zip file and if we want to update it with, without doing what we just did we go in we copy all the files um, we go to our social stream folder go in here and we copy over replace all the previous files with the new updated files now when we come back in here we just hit reload and the extension is reloaded we can ignore those errors and now our settings are all preserved because we did not remove the extension first we simply updated it it will not automatically update when there is a new version you will get notified in the top right uh, within the extension menu that there's a new version that also includes a download link that you can use to get the new files in the future this will probably be a standalone application we'll see for, i don't know for sure yet uh, but just throwing that up for you okay so i hope that was helpful and enjoy guys i'm on discord at discord.socialstream.ninja